once you turn 40, things go downhill, don't they? I realized that after my 40th birthday, my eyes are getting weaker, my hearing is not good as it used to be. Now, if you come and visit my home, you will notice that my volume on a TV set is usually in the 90s. It used to be 70, maybe 60. Now I can barely hear what they are talking. And it appears that Jesus is hard of hearing as well in the gospel passage we just heard. He is asking Simon Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, sure I do. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I do, Jesus. Peter, did you hear what I said? Do you love me? Da, yes, I do love you. Get a new hearing aid. Well, it appears to be so when you look at the English translation of the Bible, Polish as well, but if you go actually to the original text, to Greek language of this biblical passage, you will discover that there is a game of play with words that John, the author, is employing in this dialogue. Now, in English, there is basically one word for love, right? You say, I love my wife, and then you say, I love chocolate. And you use the same word to speak of chocolate and of your wife. In many other languages, there are different ways of speaking about love. Even in Spanish, there are three different words for love. In English, we are more limited than that. We say, I love Beethoven, correct? And I say, I love my country. And again, Beethoven, your country, two different kinds of love. In Greek, they know at least three, perhaps four words to speak about love. And they are not interchangeable. When John was writing this passage of the Gospel, first he had Jesus use different word for love, and Peter was answering with different word for love. But before I get there, I will teach you these three Greek words for love. So please take up your notebooks, your writing pads, there will be tests at the end of this class. The first Greek word for love is eros. And if you know English language, our word erotic comes from that Greek word. It means to love someone or something with your senses. Taste, vision, hearing, seeing, smelling. When you walk to a home and it smells like chocolate cookies, you will say, I love the smell, right? And you will say, I eros that smell. When you look at our stained glass windows and you say, I love this interplay of light and colors, in Greek you would say, I eros that stained glass window. Of course, anything sensual will be also used with this Greek word eros. Hence, in English, we say to make love, to make eros, sensual way of loving each other. The second Greek word for love is this word, philia. If you are from Philadelphia, you would know what it means. It means to love someone as your best companion, as your best friend, perhaps even a sibling. To have a very close connection with the other person, to be attached to someone else. 
And finally, the third Greek word for love is agape. Agape. Agape in Greek was used to speak when someone loved someone else to the extent that they are willing to make a sacrifice for that person. In Christian theology, we use that word agape to speak of Jesus' love for us to the extent of making a sacrifice of his life for our sake. We can use the word agape to speak of firefighters and servicemen and servicewomen who sacrifice their time, their youth, sometimes their lives because they love those whom they protect. We can use the word agape to speak of the love of a mother for her child, for she is willing to sacrifice for the sake of her child. She loves her child that much that there is nothing she wouldn't do for her child's sake. So, having learned these three Greek words, eros, philia, and agape, now we can go into this Bible passage and listen to a very interesting play of words in between Jesus and Peter. So first, Jesus asks Peter, Peter, do you agape me? Peter, do you love me in a way that you can make sacrifice for my sake? Peter, do you agape me? What does Peter answer? Lord, I philia you. I love you. You are my best buddy. We can be doing all kinds of things together, but sacrifice, I'm not so sure. I love you, Jesus, but with a different verb. I philia you. Then Jesus goes again, Peter, that's not what I asked. Do you agape me? And Peter, being a stubborn, perhaps Polish Jew, says, No, Lord, I philia you. I love you as my best companion, best friend. And finally, the third time, what Jesus does is extremely significant. Jesus gives up. Jesus asks Peter, Peter, do you philia me at least? And Peter says, Da, I said twice before, I do philia you. I love you in this way, not in a perfect way yet, but I do love you as my best friend. What is significant about this dialogue is that Jesus, in a way, lowers his expectations. That Jesus lowers the standards for Peter's sake. Jesus meets Peter where he is. He accepts the fact that Peter does not love him yet as he would like him to be loved that Peter is not ready yet to make sacrifice for the sake of his faith, that his love is at this point in his life, that his love has not matured yet. Will it happen? Yes. If you go to the first reading today, the Acts of the Apostles claim that the Apostles rejoiced because they had the honor of suffering for Christ's sake. They suffered with joy because they loved Jesus so much. So at the end, Peter and other disciples will love Jesus with this agape kind of love. They will make sacrifices. But when the dialogue took place, they were not ready just yet. 
and Jesus accepted them and found them, met them at their level. You may be aware that two days ago on Friday, the Pope issued a new document about family life regarding Catholic teaching and obedience and rules and so on. Many of the commentators focus their attention on so-called irregular situations in the life of families, in the life of people in the pews. And the Pope encourages his bishops and priests to meet the people in irregular situations wherever they are, to be compassionate listeners and not judgmental priests. The Pope is encouraging the bishops and the priests to perhaps lower the standard just a bit, to meet the people who are perhaps living together without marriage, who are perhaps same-sex couples, who are cohabitating, who have not baptized their children for a number of years, single parents, and the Pope says, all these irregular situations have to be met with love and compassion. Let's meet the people where they are. Don't you think this is exactly what Jesus was talking about with Peter? That when Jesus realized that Peter is not ready yet to be on this agape, sacrifice kind of love, he settles down with what Peter can offer him. He accepts what Peter can give him today. And Jesus is willing to accept you where you are today. Perhaps your situation is irregular in this way or another. Perhaps you don't think of yourself as a perfect, good Catholic. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you give God what you can today, that you offer God yourself where you are at the moment, and God will accept it. God will meet you exactly where you are. Perhaps it is also a lesson for us and our relationships. Perhaps there are days you think about your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, that you could do anything to make him or her happy. But I bet there are days that you think, I could just strangle this man. <laughs> you see, when those things happen, remember that they are offering you as much love as they can at this moment. Maybe they are not perfect at the time. Maybe they cannot offer you this perfect, ideal way of being a spouse, of being a partner, but they are offering you what they can. And we need to meet each other at the place where we are today. We have to accept each other as we journey together with Jesus and Peter. Amen.